Hello, welcome back to Coding with V. And today we're going to continue with App Smith and creating forms. The form we're going to create today is going to be our sign in form. And in the previous video, we created a sign up form, but that only allows us to register a user. Now we want to be able to sign in. So at the end of this video, this is what you're going to be able to do. So with that said, let's jump in and see how to create our sign in form. So before we get into creating the page for our form, I wanted to cover the two options we have and then explain why I'm going to choose option two. So option one is pretty straightforward. We create a page for sign up, which we already have done that. And then we create a second page for sign in. So these are com two completely separate pages. And notice we have a button on the sign up page that when we click it, it can take us over to the sign in page. So let's say the user was to be on a sign up page and realize, oh, I've already signed up. I have an account. They can just click the sign in button, be taken to the sign in page, and then they'll get to log in. Or if they find themselves on the sign in page and they don't have an account yet, they can just click the sign up button and be taken to the sign up page where they can perform the sign up flow. So we have a way to move between these two pages. We don't know how to do it yet, but we know that logically we can do it if we have these two separate pages. This is option one. There's a second option that I like more. But before I show you that option, I want to talk a little bit more about I want to talk a little bit more about pages in AppSmith. When we created that sign up page, we added some UI elements. So those were the text control, the input. Um, control um, the container, the form itself. Um, that wasn't a visible thing, but so we have visible and invisible um, elements. Some are used for laying out things. Um, and we have, of course, buttons. Um, but all of those are UI elements. And that's what the user sees. Now, the other thing that we added was a query. I did an HTTP post to PocketBase to create our user. But that's not the only thing that a query can do. It can also connect to our databases, whether you have a SQL database or no SQL database. So what you can immediately see here is that queries are responsible for your data slash model. The UI elements are responsible for your view. The page also has you know, JavaScript that you can attach. When we create a page, we had three tabs. UI was the last one, but before that we had queries JavaScript and UI, and we just work with UI and then we work with queries. But there's also JavaScript. So we think the JavaScript is for. The JavaScript are for variables and functions. And so what I consider that is to be a logic and control. Now, some of you who've done application programming before, whether it's web application or desktop application, you may be aware of this idea called MVC. MVC is the architecture for how to develop applications that have view, model, and the control. So MVC stands for model view control. And we could see that here. The model is in our query slash data and or abstracted behind RESTful endpoint. The control is the code that we write that our variables or function that give our pages their dynamic behavior. And then the view are just the element. That's what the user sees. And the way I showed it here is from the view, you're going to be retrieving data from the queries to populate the view or taking data from the view and sending them to the queries to be persisted in, you know, whatever database or call, whatever RESTful backend you have. Additionally, you can use logic from JavaScript to do the same thing, you know, to react to um, clicks on the UI or to modify values on the UI. So in JavaScript, you can change what a UI element shows, for example, a text box or something like that. So back and forth, right? So this is bidirectional. You can also use JavaScript to call the same backend and all this other stuff that you have in your queries. So there's a possibility of doing it that way also. So I wanted to cover this, the takeaway, if you remember nothing else, the App Smith page has three components, UI, queries, and JavaScript. 
and UI is just the things you see. Queries contain the data that backs up that you, those UI elements, and JavaScript is where you can write logic or control to give your page dynamic behavior. Okay, so now that we know this, let's move on to option two. So option two, I would say we can create a single page with tabs. And so this the way this works is let's imagine that we create a page called odd page and we have this thing called a tab. So what's a tab? Well, if you have a five subject notebook with tabs, well, it's essentially like that. When you close the book, you'll see the cover, but you can select a tab and you can flip and you can see one thing. You select tab two, you flip and you see something else. And it's the same thing here with this UI element. It's a UI element that allows you to stack essentially vertically, um, you know, or in the Z plane, a set of UI elements. So basically what it allows you to do is group your elements in such a way that if you say tab one is visible, all the elements that's in tab one would be shown. If you say tab two is invisible, all the elements in tab two would be shown, etc. And you could create m several tabs. Tab element could possibly show these tabs visually so the user can just click on the tab or we can hide it and drive the whole tab selection through code, which is exactly what we end up doing because as you saw in the demonstration, we did not have a visible way to select the tab. We just clicked on the button and it navigated between the different tabs. So why would you want to use this? Well, signing up and signing in are so closely related. Why not just put them on the same in on the same page and then use something like a tab controller to separate them? Plus, the added benefit is now we get to see how to use the tab controller and um, how we can control it with some code. So this is the option we're going to go with. So if we're going to go the tab approach, we can actually make the tabs visible and have the user click them, but we don't want that. In this case, we don't really want the user to know that we're using a tab. So well, instead, what we're going to have are several variables and function that allow us to say which tab we think is that we want to be the default, which is when the page loads, which tab should be shown. And we'll have another variable that can control which tab we've selected. When the page is first loaded, our current tab would be the sign in tab, for example. But once you sign in or you click on the sign up, um button it should set our current tab to the sign up tab and so that's the tab that should be shown and if for whatever reason so long as the page isn't destroyed but simply reloaded or something this variable should still allow us to when we refresh load the exact same tab which is our sign up tab so we're going to use this variable to control which one of the tabs that we display don't worry if you don't quite understand all of this i just wanted to so the later ground of what we're going to do so that when we do it, you can see. All right, so let's get to coding. First thing we'll do is create a new blank page. So click the plus icon at the top left of your workspace to create a new page. Name it auth page. Add a container element. Use the box icon for the layout section on the left. Inside the container, add a tab element for switching between sign up and sign in forms. So let's make things easy by just simply copying our sign up form from our account sign up page. And we'll do that by navigating to the account sign up page we created previously, select the form element and click on it once. Then on a Mac, you're gonna type command C to copy the form. If you're on Windows or Linux, then that's gonna be control C. With the form copy, we're going to return to the account page and we're going to create the sign up and sign in forms. But we're going to do that by pasting the form we just copied onto tab one. We can paste by typing command V on Mac or control V for Windows and Linux. Move the elements around that we just pasted in to the left inside the container. Notice the form we just pasted at the image element um, with the form. So we'll just move that out into the container. So regardless of which tab we're on, we'll see the same image, but next we're going to go on to sign in form. And so you're going to click on tab two and paste the same form that we copied previously. 
remove any unnecessary elements like full name, password confirmation, and the file upload. We don't need that for signing in. Again, rename the inputs appropriately for sign in functionality. We need to rename our inputs accordingly, and um, that is so we can access them in code. Now we can rename our sign up and sign in tabs. So let's update the tab labels accordingly and call name change tab one to sign up, tab two to sign in. So the first time this page is loaded, we want to show the sign up form. And to do that, we're going to use a variable to track which form or tab we should be showing. So let's open the left side panel and click on the JavaScript tab to open AppSmith JavaScript editor, that a new JavaScript object. We have this JSON object with variables and function. So let's create a variable called current tab and let's set the value to sign up. We also need a function to update this variable. So let's create a function called set current tab, which takes a tab name parameter. We also want to um, create a function called do login. It's going to be an async function. Async simply means that a function that runs asynchronously. If you don't know anything about async or JavaScript, don't worry about it. So just do what I do here. We also need to make sure that the tab element uses the variable we have defined to set which tab should be the default. And so that we can do by going to the tab element and setting the default tab and using the expression that says, okay, use this JavaScript object and the current tab variable or field for that JavaScript object. So let's configure our sign up and sign in button. Now, this is going to sound a little bit confusing. So if what I'm saying seems confusing, definitely just slow down the video and watch what I did. Basically, in summary, what we need to do is on our sign in form, we want our sign up button to set the current tab to sign up. So it's going to call the set current tab function and give it the value sign up. On the sign up form, we want the sign in button to also call the set current tab and give it the value sign in. We also want that upon successful sign up that the user should be given the opportunity to sign in. So the way we're going to do this is to add an action to our unsuccessful um, uh, action to unsuccess for the sign up, basically saying that if you sign up and there's no issue on success, we want you to navigate to sign in. So that's also going to call the set current tab. Um, with the value sign in. We also need that our sign in button on the sign in form to call do login. Now we're not actually going to go ahead and do the login flow now in terms of calling pocket base, but basically what we want to simulate is that if you're on the sign in page and you click the sign in button, then it should call this function do login. Okay, so let's review the changes that we've made so far. So let's start here with the sign up form. And here I have some default values, but that's just so that I can um, test easily. You will not use default values because you don't want your users to have to always erase this. So please don't do this in your, in your application, right? I'm just doing this for testing, of course. And then let's see what else. So I've called this um, form, the actual form element representing these set of controls, but I've called that the sign up form just so it, so it's easy to see and it's not just you know, form one and form two. So I call that sign up form, rename that there. And then my controls, I rename them. So the input control that we're going to care about, this is going to be text sign up full name. This is going to be text sign up email and text sign up password, text sign up password confirm. I didn't want to rename the file avatar, but to be consistent, should probably rename this one, but I renamed those. All right. Then the next thing is, what do we do with our buttons? So for the signing button on the sign up form, so 
got to be careful is the sign in button on the sign up form. So this is if you're on the sign up form and you're like, oh, I already have an account. And for whatever reason, I end up with this sign up form. I don't want to sign up. I want to go sign in. So what should happen is on click. We want to execute the function in our Java object that's called set current tab. And we want to pass it the string that says sign in because that's the form we want to go to. If this all works, clicking this button should set our current tab variable to sign in. And that should toggle or change to the next tab. But before we check that out, let's just look here. What should our sign up button do on the sign up form? Well, it should execute that query that we created before called create user and the way that's done is create user that run. So on click, that's what's going to happen. The other thing we did was we have an action for callback, which is if you sign up successfully and this function executes without any issue, then on success, what we want to do is then switch to the sign in form. So once again, we call the sign in form or we set our current type to the sign in form so we can then be toggle you know or go to that tab assuming this is going to work when we set a variable all right so hopefully that par part is clear the other thing we did is on our sign in tab of course we changed the input variables which you can see over here but you can just select them here and you would have changed their name up there. Again, text sign in email and text sign in password. Those are the only two things we need for sign in. And of course, you'll change the form text there, the text field. And in terms of the buttons, the sign up button on our sign in tab, what do we need it to do? Well, this is to go back to the sign up tab. So we call that function. Now, the way I have it here is, um, you know, I type a single quote, but really all I need to do is just type this. And you see, it is a string. So I really didn't need to put wrap it in single quote. So that's fine this way. Since it escaped the single quote, it would actually store it as, <laughs> Um, or tab name at, had a um, single quote around it, and that might not have worked. We don't have any action here because we just change into that form. Here for the sign in button on the sign in form, we're going to execute the JavaScript function do login. And for this, we don't have a you know unsuccess um, callback, but let's say we wanted to, I don't know, if uh, sign up fail, or if, if sign in fail, this function will return some error message. We could have an on callback that says basically display a message or a toast or something. Um, and then on success, eventually we'll make it so that our unsuccessful login, you navigate to the home page, but we don't have a home page right now, so there's nothing. And then the last thing that's important is on our tab itself. On the tab, we want the default tab, instead of being a string, we use an expression by typing slash and then entering this expression, which says for Java object, we want to use the variable call current tab. And you can see currently that value is sign up because that's the default value we set for it until we sort of click the other buttons when it's going to change. So for example, if we were over here and we click this sign in button, for example, notice how it switches because this value variable would have changed. If I go over and hover over this now, it should say sign in. And so we can now go test this. So let's go click this. And we can see that if we click the sign up button, we are switch to the sign up form. If we click the sign in button, we switch to the sign in form. We can then toggle between forms using the tabs. Now we can eventually get rid of the tabs, but for now, at least we want to see that. And then sure enough, if you click sign up 
for this user, um, it should fail. And this is due to the fact that we are using incorrect values, like our API for creating a user, the inputs that it referenced, since we did a copy, the names um, have changed. So let's fix this by navigating to our create user API call. And we'll do this by navigating to aspect queries tab and then click on the create, create user um, function. Under the body tab, update the input fields. So we want to update the fields that we use to retrieve values from our form. And of course, we, since we changed the name, we have to update the full name, username, password, and password confirmation, text field names. And so let's try the sign up and sign in flow again. So if we click on sign up, we will see that we successfully create and register a new user. And we are taken to the sign in form where we can then sign in as this user or another user if we have another account. And if we click this button, it's, of course, it's not going to do the anything because all we did was have a function that then stores a value. So I think this is enough for this video. In the next video, we'll complete the sign-in flow by calling Pocket Base. If you try this and you have any issues or comments, suggestions, please let me know in the video. If you find this useful, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post new video. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your patience and for subscribing. Stay safe. See you in the next video.